Thomas, let's speak about the uh, 1932 Picasso, we, which is a big star of the season. And I remember that a uh, long time ago, you you were in charge of another Picasso of uh, 32, which makes a, a record price. Good morning, Judith. And uh, yes, of course, so you're talking about the Brody uh, Picasso of 1932 of Marie-Thérèse, uh, a wonderful painting, uh, which uh, we sold about 13 years ago uh, when I was working at Christie's and that made $106 million, uh, which was an absolute fabulous, fabulous painting, uh, wonderful, uh, quite complex. And, um, and I remember at the time it made 106, um, buyer's premium included, uh, which we were hoping that we could exceed 100 million hammer, uh, but we didn't. Uh, we really felt there was a threshold. Uh, but of course, times have changed. 13 years have gone by. And the Fisher Landau uh, Picasso is a, is a wonderful image in a way more graphic, more simple, I think, in its composition. Uh, more graphic? Yeah, more graphic because I think the, the colors are very, very strong and it's quite a simple, uh, you know, it's, it's quite a patchy composition, but very simple. It doesn't have the complex background that the Brody has. But I think a super commercial picture, I think quite a stunning picture in terms of presence. I look forward to seeing in the flesh because I haven't. But honestly, my first reaction when I heard that Sotheby's was offering the painting with an estimate around $120 million, uh, I didn't think it was an unreasonable. Uh, I thought, uh, talking to colleagues, I thought the picture could be worth around $150, $180 million uh, because they're very rare pictures and that's what everybody wants. Uh, and uh, uh, as you know, uh, great pictures in the last years have the tendency uh, to be valued around that price, more around 150, 180, and 120. So I hope and I think that it will be it will be one of the great success of, of the following weeks in New York, and it will exceed its estimate, and, and hopefully it will make $150 million or more. Yes, but uh, and it's guaranteed, right? But still uh, now by Sotheby's. Yes, uh, as far as I could tell, I checked again this morning on the catalog online and all the Fisher Landau uh, lots are in-house guarantee for now. Uh, and there's no indication that it's been sold to a third party yet. Uh, I would imagine there are lots of candidates of people who want to take that guarantee at 120. Uh, I'm not sure if the auction house is willing to do so or intends to keep it as an in-house. Uh, mm -hmm. in, in view of the last few months uh, and... Uh, uh, a receding market, uh, which honestly, and a more difficult market, which we've seen in the past few months, I would expect the auction house to accept third party. So, uh, it's, let's speak about the situation now in terms of international art market and the fact that uh, everything is unsure. Yes, very much so. Uh, very unsure. Uh, I can tell by from my own business that I think uh, I find that everything is much more difficult, takes more time. There's a lot of hesitation uh, in what I would call the middle market, you know, pictures between three and $5 million. Uh, I think people have a difficulty having the confidence uh, to buy now uh, privately. And we've seen the same at auction. Uh, I think it started already in June. Uh, uh, we've seen that the London sales were quite modest uh, and that it was difficult to reach the low estimate in many, many instances. Uh, it was always difficult to analyze because with the third party irrevocable bids, uh, things sell. Uh, so if you add the buyer's premium, it looks very good. Uh, but we've seen this fall, uh, the Josephovitz collection, uh, the Modernité collection at Sotheby's, uh, that the market is difficult and that we're struggling to find buyers. And that it feels that uh, ever since Paul Allen in November of last year, uh, the market is not in a recession, uh, but the market is slowing down. To me, there's no doubt. Uh, that uh, um, it's much more difficult than it used to be. Uh, certainly more difficult than 2021 when there was a sort of euphoric period after COVID. Uh, yes, that but uh, now, now there's uh, another something, uh, a detail, which is very surprising in a way that we were not used to in the last years, which is that there's a lot of important lot with no guarantee. Uh, absolutely. And, and I have to say, I was quite surprised uh, by the quality of the works that are coming up at auction. Not Fisher Landau. Fisher Landau is a one owner collection. It's got some wonderful things, you know, the Jasper Johns, the Ed Rocha. Uh, it's got the Twombly. It's got some really good things. Uh, but in the multi owner sales, the evening sales, uh, I was really surprised, one, by the freshness of the material, the quality of the material, the sizes of the pictures. We're talking about, you know, 
many, many great, great pictures with great sizes and the volume. Uh, I calculate that about, a, you know, over 160 lots are being offered in excess of $1 million. And perhaps more importantly, almost 30 lots are, are offered above $10 million uh, and sometimes well, well above in the 20s, in the 30s. Uh, and that's a lot of pictures to manage. It's a lot of pictures to sell. And, uh, and it's a bit contrary to, um, uh, how would you say, to, to the difficult results we've had in the past month. Uh, I'm surprised that so much material is coming to the market this season. Uh, but it's good things. Um, is I'm it thinking... good? It's a bit dangerous. So there's a lot of lots with no guarantee. Can you give some example of... Uh, uh, yes, of course. Uh, I'll start with Sotheby's. Uh, Sotheby's uh, has uh, a Japanese consignment that includes uh, a popular series from Monet uh, that's unguaranteed and uh, that carries an estimate of 30 to $40 million, which feels about right, but it's unguaranteed. Uh, it also has a wonderful Chagall from 1924, Au-dessus de la ville, uh, estimated 12 to 18, unguaranteed. It also has the Baltus from the Chicago Art Institute that's being deaccessioned uh, with an estimate also of 12 to 18, but unguaranteed. Uh, you know, and this is a picture that's 100. Baltus is difficult. I mean, I love Baltus work. But... Very difficult, very narrow market, and and maybe one of these artists. Uh, that is difficult to sell today because of the subject matter and the sensitivity of the subject matter. Uh, but there's also Picasso's, Giacometti's. Uh, what at, about Christie's? Uh, at Christie's, uh, they have uh, the Cezanne still life, an amazing, amazing still life, but that's quite small in size. It's uh, 35 by 45 centimeters. Uh, that carries an estimate of 35 to $45 million, and that's unguaranteed. It comes from a German museum that's deaccessioning it. Uh, they, what else do they have that's unguaranteed? They have a lovely signac, an opus signac, which are quite rare, uh, carrying an estimate of 15 to $20 million unguaranteed, uh, and also a large Picasso, uh, a black and white uh, Picasso, monochrome Picasso from the 60s, uh, which is in excess of $10 million and doesn't have a guarantee. Moreover, there are several lots that have been guaranteed by the auction house and are not yet backed by a third-party guarantee. So that too is going to be interesting to see that you know, whether in the next few weeks or not, in the next 10 days or not, uh, these guarantees are going to be picked up by third party or not. Uh, it seems to me that auction houses find it more difficult than before to resell the guarantees to third party. Uh, so it's going to be an interesting exercise to see if all these lots uh, are going to be pre-sold through irrevocable bids or if they're going to be withdrawn or... So most of the time they do that at the last moment? Not most of the time, but we've seen in the, especially I think in the Paris sale, uh, we've seen that quite a few lots were withdrawn uh, just for lack of interest. Uh, and it's not a question of adjusting the reserve. No, no, I mean, the so negotiation with the third party guarantee. Yes. What about those? So this, uh, some of them are negotiated at the last minute, often. Of course. Uh, even, I believe, even during the sale. At the no. very, very, very last minute, even two or three lots before. Yes, of course. Ah, yeah, yeah okay. Yeah. Third party guarantees are, you know, it's. So, what are the risk now if we want to summarize the situation? Uh, what are what are the risks? Well, the, the risk is that we uh, officially show to the art market that we're really in a recession. Uh, that's the risk. Uh, and the risk is mostly financial for auction houses if they have to take losses on their guarantee in order to sell the works. Uh, and I think the risk is to underline the fact that we don't really know where the bottom of the market is. You know, we know in theory what things are worth, uh, but so many things have been backed up in the past by third party guarantee that they sold, uh, but with no underlying bids uh, below it. So what are the numbers? What are the right numbers? Uh, and I think this is really a key, key season because uh, normally, one would, ex one would expect this season a smaller sale from Sotheby's and from Christie's and from Phillips, a very tight sale, very conservative sale with few lots, and on we go. And then you do okay. But this time around, we're not talking about small sales. We're talking about huge sales. Yes, there is no Paul Allen this season, but hell, there's some great works, fresh to the market, big size, decorative, well-estimated or in line with the market. And... Um, and there's no hiding, uh, basically. You so can't it could start. be it could happen that there would be seventy percent sold or 
you want to let us? Yes. Yes, and, and, and I think, you know, uh, that would actually be useful for the market to know exactly where we stand. Uh, you know, I, I don't wish them that. And I don't think, honestly, I don't think the sales deserve to be 70% sold because they're good things. Uh, but if it's the case, uh, it means that we haven't renewed our buyers enough, the numbers of buyers, the new buyers, and that maybe the tastes have shifted and the, the, there's no longer confidence in the estimate provided by the auction houses, uh, which is typical of a cyclical market, of a downward market, of a bear market, if you want. Uh, so um, there's no hiding, uh, and it's going to be interesting to see where all these lots above a million dollars do, and perhaps even more importantly, all the lots above 10 million, what prices do they, do they fetch, and how do they fetch these prices? Is it only the irrevocable bid? And what do you do with the holes? Do you withdraw the, the, the lots that don't have any interest? Do you run the risk of selling it without a third party? Uh, it's going to be really interesting. And in a way, uh, thank God we have these great sales because it's, it's, uh, it's judgment day. Uh, it's, it's really the right season to be able to know where we stand and how natural, uh, where the natural market is this season. Okay. It's super interesting. Well, but, but well done to the auction house for putting together a great sale. Okay. Merci beaucoup, Thomas. Merci, Merci Judith. Beaucoup.